The minute we make any decisions from a place of pain, we're shooting ourselves in the foot. We need to be making decisions from a place of healthy power. Now I can see my situation with healthy eyes and go, right, is he doing the work? Is he doing enough work? Yes or no? Yes. All right. Maybe I'll give it another week. No. Okay. That boundary is getting enforced. Get some power. Get rid of the pain. Get to the power point within you, that power place, and then make the decision, not from pain. What's up, everyone? If you're looking to be inspired, motivated, educated, and entertained, you have come to the right place. Welcome to the Bob Mom Podcast, the podcast where we explore your fitness, life mindsets, and actions that help you become unstoppable. You're worth it, and it's time to finally make changes in your life that will last you the rest of your life. Hey everyone, welcome to the Bomb Mom Podcast. I am Melissa Vogel, your host. We are diving in to all kinds of topics this year on the Bomb Mom Podcast, and I'm excited to wrap it up. 2023 coming up here. Can you guys believe that? We have like another month and then it's done. So we're going to finish strong and hard on this podcast and keep tackling topics that I know people don't want to talk about but we have to, and we're continuing that on. We're, we're talking about trauma and betrayal again. If you listened to last week's episode, it was equally great. And I know we're, we're talking about grief and navigating through that grief. So go back and listen to it because it's awesome. I want you guys to go back and listen to all of the episodes because Bomb Mom podcast is amazing. Yes, I'm the host, but it's a whole team and people that put it together. It's not just me. I just sit here and talk. (laughs) So I'm so grateful. If there's anything I'm thankful for today, it's definitely the podcast. Go back and listen to all of them. And I wanted to kind of keep the conversation going around this topic, just about like grief and navigating loss and and, and trauma and, and just experience overall in this field with this episode today. So that's That's what we're diving into. And I know it's kind of heavy for Thanksgiving, right? But I know many of you will be having a little bit more downtime because you won't be working. A lot of people will be traveling in the car, driving to and from places. You can tune into the podcast. And it just, we have a little bit more downtime, right? We're going to have a lot of people have that whole week off, a four week vacation, you know, coming up here. And it's a good time to just have some quality time to yourself. I know we want to spend as much time as we can with family, but make sure you guys are creating space for you too. And a lot of people are like, no, do a solo episode on Thanksgiving, you know, be light and be grateful and And I'm like, yeah, okay, you know, I can do that. But also I can kind of just keep this going and give someone to kind of just tuck away, listen to this episode and really dive in to maybe some things that they just they need to digest. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And you know what, there's never the perfect time to do that either, ever. Like there, there's never a good time to be like, man, I really got to listen to this podcast about betrayal trauma. Like that, when is that, when is that ever going to happen? When you can be like, oh my God, I'm so excited to like sit down and listen to this. Like, no, I mean, maybe if you know it's on the Bomb Mom podcast and you're like, I know Melissa's going to spin this in a way I can handle it for sure. <laughs> but typically we're not like, yeah, let's talk about cheating and betrayal. Let's do it. No, that's not going to happen. So as you guys know, I'm all about leaving your comfort zone, having uncomfortable conversations. I'm all about doing things even when we don't feel like it, even when it's not the perfect time. And we're just going to keep that going. We're going to keep that going with today. Now, first, before we dive in, make sure you rate and review this podcast. It is huge. It is super helpful. It does amazing things for the show. So make sure you do that. Also, know that no matter what platform you're on, there's always like these three little buttons or like look at your screen. There's a way to share this episode. Share the Bomb Mom podcast. It is the gift that keeps on giving. Maybe it's not this episode or maybe it is this episode, this episode might be a good one to be like, hey, I know you've dealt with this. Listen to this podcast. It can give you hope. Okay, boom, done. Simple, coming from a place of love. But we have other great ones on just like mindset and nutrition and working out and motherhood and parenting. Like share it. Look at your screen. There's always a way to share the link. 
share it and share it on your social media, on your Facebook page, all the things. Also, we have swag. We have bomb mom swag. One of my favorite ones is doing me for me. Uh Uh-huh. Because we are all about empowering ourselves and then you can make decisions, which our guest today talks about, which is awesome that I love. So check out the show notes because you're going to find great information on our swag, how you can work with our guests, but then also how you can work with me. If you are not a bomb mom yet and you are looking to make some changes in your life, we have options. We have options. You can get on our app program and like, hey, I just want your workouts. I just need the app. Like, boom, we got you. Maybe you start a challenge. We're going to run one in December. Maybe you do 30 days with me during the holiday season when it's really hard and you're like, I don't want to lose myself. I don't want to get stuck in the hole and then hit January and be like, new year, new me, like new resolutions. And before I had 30 pounds to lose, now I have 40 because I gained 10 over the holiday season. No, screw that. We're not doing that. Get into a challenge. And if you're like, I'm ready, I want to be a bomb mom, like how can I do this? book a call with me. We'll talk. Even if you're not sure if you should do a challenge or the app or bomb mom, book a call with me. I'll put my Calendly link in there. I do 15 minute calls. We jump on, we jump off. We have a game plan in place for you. All right. So let's dive into this episode. We have Miss Beth Fisher on and she is a betrayal trauma recovery specialist and she guides couples through the healing process so they can build a new relationship based on trust intimacy, and mutual respect. Beth has a master's in counseling and certifications in NLP, root cause therapy, innate well-being, and post-betrayal transformations. She draws mostly on her personal experience, oh yes, as a betrayed wife, and who together with her husband created a magical marriage on the other side of her husband's infidelities. Helping other couples do the same is not only her mission, but her passion. Miss Beth is so brave. I love her. She shares about her journey and her struggles with her husband and through her marriage. Oh, you guys, I know most people are going to listen to this and they're going to think like, oh my God, once a cheater, always a cheater. And this is just going to be about, you know, how to break up and how to get out and how to know when it's done. It's not. We're going to surprise you because there could be hope if you have been cheated on or if you are the cheater. There are so many layers to this topic. And you know what? Betrayal takes all different forms too. So betrayal isn't just, oh, he cheated on me and he slept with someone else or she cheated on me and she slept with someone else. Betrayal is ruining that trust, you know, and that can happen in multiple ways. So again, even if you haven't been cheated on, listen to this episode, you're going to get great insight on just yourself, self-love, self-worth, relationships, and all of the things all of the things. Check out the show notes because there is ways that you can work with Beth. All right, everyone, take a deep breath. This is an incredible episode. Enjoy the show. Hey, everyone, welcome to the Bomb Mom Podcast. Today, we have Miss Beth Fisher on with us. Beth, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Melissa. It's great to be here. We are all smiles and it was great talking with you before we hit that record button, but Beth, we're diving into a topic. I want to say nasty and dirty, but it's not nasty and dirty, but it's like, Ooh, that topic that like just doesn't feel good, but we need to put words and volume and feeling and healing all behind it. Absolutely. We really do. Yeah. It's not a topic that people like to talk about. And there's reasons for that, you know, and some of them are generational, but we have to bring this to the light. Absolutely. We do. Mm -hmm. We do. We're diving into cheating and betrayal trauma. And now I got to know, how did you get started into this? What's your journey and your path with this? Well, my husband decided that he was going to be a cheater. That's very simplistic, but my husband and I had been married for many, many years. Typical marriage, you know, I was a typical mom and wife and we worked and paid the bills and, you know, just kind of going through life like most couples do. There's nothing, you know, there was nothing like really great about us. Like we had this perfect marriage or there was nothing really bad. We got along. We had a good life together. But one day I kind of found out that there was some other things going on on the side. And my world literally shattered overnight. You know, betrayal trauma is real. It really is a massive, it's a massive punch to the gut because you don't know 
what has been going on. And then all of a sudden you find out, oh my God, you've been cheating on me. How could that be? I mean, everything, literally, Melissa, everything changes in an instant. So that's been my journey. Not only did I work on myself, you know, we use this word healing all the time, right? Not only did I have to work on myself, but my husband worked on himself and we are still married. Now he ended up having six affairs while we were married. There was some cheating while we were dating. And we have actually worked through every inch of that mud, that nightmare, that if I may say the word hell, that hell that we lived through. And we both completely transformed our lives as individuals, not as a couple, as individuals. Mm -hmm. And we have created a marriage on the other side that is so unlike the marriage that we had before. And that's what I help couples do now. I want to get the message out there that there is a possibility for healing if the right steps are taken. If the right steps are taken, you can get to the other side of this. I mean, I'm so sorry that you went through that, but I love hearing this message and this journey and your story because it gives hope. It does give light. But I think you said a couple of really key things is like he did the work, you did the work individually, you transformed, you healed. It wasn't like, because I'm sure, let me play devil's advocate, right? Like I'm sure there's women listening like, oh my God, you know, like once a cheater, always a cheater. Like he's just going to do it to her again. But you're saying like, no, couples can truly heal and recover from this. Absolutely, Melissa, they can. And I get that same thing. Trust Mm -hmm. me on my social media, right? I'll get blasted. You know, why are you telling these women to stay? You know, and I'm like, well, I'm first of all, but what I am saying that if both people do the right work, Both people will transform themselves individually. Then they come together and create a whole new relationship based on actual honesty, actual vulnerability, actual emotional connection, all the things that were missing for the most part, at least in one person during that first marriage that they had. But it takes both people. And I have to tell you, the other answer that I'll give to that is most people who have the mindset that once a cheater, always a cheater. They usually have been betrayed and they were with somebody who never did the work or they went to marriage counseling. And this is another thing that I get lots and lots of questions on because one of the things that I teach is that marriage counseling is not always the answer. I can see that. Absolutely. And one of the first things I did, Melissa, when I found out about my husband's past, I started Googling, right? And what comes up? marriage counseling, marriage counseling. You got to go to marriage counseling. And we tried it and it didn't work. We got nowhere. We would come out of our marriage counseling sessions mad, like angry, fighting. I would come out crying. He would come out frustrated. And this is the interesting thing that happens. I felt bad. I felt like there was something wrong with me. Like everybody else, you know, is getting through this. Other people go to marriage counseling. Why is this not working for me? So a lot of the betrayed partners kind of do this self-gaslighting, like there must be something wrong with me that this isn't working. There must be something wrong with me that I'm not healing faster or that I'm not moving on. And that's really, it's really a dangerous slippery slope for the betrayed partner. But back to the point of the marriage counseling, marriage counseling doesn't work because the marriage doesn't have a problem. And that's where people are usually like, well, talking about, obviously the marriage has a problem, Beth. No. Marriage is just a word that describes a relationship between two people. A marriage cannot have a problem. It's just an adjective. Two people in a relationship can have problems. And until each person figures out their own baggage, their own stuff, there's not anything to work on. There's no marriage to work on. Marriage is just a word. Two individual people need to go on their own path. Cheaters can change, just like drug addicts can get clean, just like alcoholics can stop drinking. They have to have three things. And this is what I'm preaching all the time. In order to make a change, we need three things, no matter what we're doing in life. And I know you speak about this with your audience as well, right? We need to have the right knowledge. We need to have the right tools. And we need to have the right internal motivation. Yes internal motivation. Now, what normally happens is with my job, right? When I'm working with couples and I know there's cases 
where it's opposite, but the majority of my clients are where the, uh, it's the husband who cheated and the wife is the betrayed partner. Okay. So the husbands will come to me and they're, you know, they're like all arms folded, arms crossed, you know, this is my wife's problem, Beth, I stopped, you know, fix her, right? Oh, okay, sure. I'll fix her. You don't have anything to do. And then he's like, well, you know, maybe. And I'm like, yeah, most of the men will come to me with external motivation. They're doing it for their wives. They're doing it to save the family. They're doing it because they're being told to. I'm not going to get anywhere with that guy. I have a very short amount of time to convince him that he's got individual issues to work on. Yeah. He's got individual work to do. Once he really starts tasting what it feels like to live a good, clean, honest life, now the motivation switches to internal. Men don't cancel my appointments. <laughs> They're like, give me more, Beth. Give me more. I want more. I want more. You know it best, Melissa, right? When yeah. When people oh. start seeing the other side, they don't want to stop. And that's the same thing with betrayal. It's the same thing. I never looked at it that way. And everything that you're saying with like that internal motivation, it does. It just clicks for me. Like I totally get it because that's what I'm telling other people and women, especially because that's who I mainly work with. They're always like, well, I want to fit into this dress or I want to lose weight to be able to move around with my kids or I want him to have sex with me more. Like that's great. All part of like, you know, the motivation that's going to get you there. But like, why deep inside do you want to create change? And I love that we're looking at this with someone who has cheated on their partner and like, why? Why do you want to fix it? I can think of a story of people that are very close to me, extremely close. He cheated on her and they tried and bang, bang, you know, whatever. And he just, it was like, I said, I was sorry. That should be enough. And she's like, well, you should probably be saying you're sorry to me every single day for the rest of your life. So <laughs> two wrong things already happening right now that I see that I'm saying out loud. And he's just like, I said, I was sorry. I'm not going to do it again. Is that not enough for you? Well, I don't know what to tell you then. They're divorced now. Yeah. I listened to that for almost three years from my husband. It is the path because without a true understanding of betrayal trauma, without a real deep awareness of what is really going on in a betrayed partner's world, mm -hmm. you know, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. Mm -hmm. If the unfaithful partner doesn't understand that, then that's what he thinks is the protocol, yeah. is the path. You need to just forget about it. Why do you keep going back there? You're choosing to live in pain. I said, I'm sorry. What more can I do? Right? All of that is very, very common. I list, like I said, I listened to it for three years from my husband too. And it's just not, it's not going to get you anywhere. The unfaithful partner has a role to play. In fact, the unfaithful partner has twice as much work to do as the betrayed partner. And, I can but that's see that. never what happens. Yeah. What happens, right? The women are the ones that go to counseling. We're the ones that go to counseling to say, help me. My husband cheated on me and I don't know what to do. I can't sleep, can't eat. I can't think. We've got, you know, I have a job I can't go to. I mean, the list is endless. Yeah. So they're the ones seeking help while their husbands are snoring away at night. And that's how I lived as well. So until we really understand that the unfaithful partner has a huge role in reconciliation, especially a huge role in this, then nothing is going to change. That cheaters will never change. That's where that falls in. If they're not willing to do the work, then they aren't going to change. Okay. Devil's advocate. I'm a listener right now. And I know like this happened to me or I'm like listening and my sister just got cheated on. How do they get the partner to see that they play a huge role in this? How can they open the door to get them to see? Because I'm sure the cheater is like the betrayer is like, I'm not going to do it again. What? I'm sorry. But they have to see more. How do we get them to move to that? It's not an easy thing. And again, everything I speak about, I lived. So I know how hard it you know, is. Girl. My husband refused to get help for almost three years. And he trickled. There's this phrase in the betrayal world called trickle truth, where you get the whole story gets trickled out over a long period of time, yep. right? Yep. 
that my husband's first version was very different than the last version, right? <laughs> as far as how many, how long, things like that. Mm -hmm. But usually, I got to tell you, Melissa, it's one of the reasons I created the free, I have a, a free video that I that I hope your audience will uh, will listen to if they're experiencing okay. this. It's, we'll it's put the free. link in there. Yeah, because they need somebody like me who's lived through this to tell them what's going on. That's, mm -hmm. that's usually number one, I we have it. to get them to listen. And there's a really, there's a reason for that, which is the betrayed partner already has the baggage in the unfaithful partner's mind, right? So in the husband's mind, his wife is just crazy. You know, she's stuck. She doesn't want to move on. She doesn't want to forgive me. She whatever, right? So he already has this connection, this link between her and her trauma. And until he hears it from somebody else, and I say it pretty bluntly, your wife is not crazy. Your wife is experiencing trauma from a traumatic event that you caused. So until they literally hear that from somebody else, they actually have the, I'll say this word very loosely, but they have this privilege of blaming their wives for being the reason that the couple can't move forward because they don't know any other way because this message is not out there, which is why I'm so passionate about it. Here's the other way. Back doors is what I call them. You know, again, the question being, how do I get my husband mm -hmm. to even, you know, talk to somebody about this? Sometimes we have to use back doors because if I think about this from a 30,000 foot view, Let's say there's children, right? Let's say this is a typical couple, husband cheated, wife, couple kids, right? If the husband is cheating on the wife or was cheating on the wife, they're not living their best life, right? They've been living with secrets and gaslighting and manipulating. All of that is definition of, of emotional abuse. The minute I start manipulating and gaslighting another human being, that's a form of emotional abuse. Chances are that man has not been the best father chances are that man has not been the best employee or boss or son or uncle, right? That cheating is indicative of a lifestyle. And I don't mean that in a really literal sense. I just mean if somebody is cheating on their wives, they're unhealthy. There's not just one part of them that's unhealthy. It's unhealthy behavior that yeah. usually comes from some sort of a life patterning where maybe they don't trust. Maybe they they don't know how to emotionally connect on a deep level. Well, if they can't emotionally connect on a deep level with their wives, chances are they've not really emotionally connected with their kids either. So we can kind of use a back door to say, hey, you know what? You cheated. I get it. We want to try to reconcile. But you know, there's a bigger picture here. We need to become better parents. Maybe if we start doing some work on ourselves, we will become better parents. That's usually, again, what I call a back door to try to get them to go, yeah, okay, maybe I'll go talk to somebody if it's for the kids. I'm not going to talk about my affairs, though, That's, but I'll go talk to somebody about the kids. Great. Get them to me, and I will instantly get them to see the connection between the kids and the affairs. Mm -hmm. If they... That to me, that's a back door. Now there's a third option here and it's a boundary. It's a strong boundary to say, if you do not get help, if you do not talk to somebody, then I can't stay. Now that's a really hard line. It's the line that I ended up having to draw for my husband after almost three years of living in that state. I had to just say it. I had to say, I can't stay. I had to love me more than I loved him. I had to love me more than I loved the idea of this marriage. I had to love me. And sometimes it takes a boundary to say, you need to get help or I can't stay. Today's episode is brought to you by AG1. When I got introduced to AG1, I was tired of taking all of the pills for my vitamins and my nutrients and my minerals. And I just... I wasn't feeling like I was getting what I deserved. And honestly, I wanted to boost my immune system. I wanted to improve my gut health and I wanted something that helped me balance my stressful life. If you are a longtime listener, you might know that I've been drinking AG1 for almost two years now. Now, when I started drinking AG1, 
I was taking all of the things and I was recovering, but just not as fast as I wanted to. I had energy, but I just knew that there was more potential. And AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that supports your body's universal needs like gut optimization, stress management, and immune support that we all need. And since 2010, AG1 has led the future of foundational nutrition, continuously refining their formula to create a smarter, better way to evaluate your baseline health. Not only did I replace my multivitamin with AG1, but I love that every scoop also includes digestive enzymes for gut support, magnesium, and B vitamins for energy support and adaptogens to balance my body's stress levels. AG1 is the supplement that I trust to support my body. And if you've been on the fence about it, it's time to take control. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packets with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com forward slash bomb mom. That's drinkag1.com forward slash bomb mom and check it out. Right. I don't see anything wrong with that because, you know, the betrayal destroyed everything. And for you to set boundaries and be like, I need you to do this or I can't do this. It sounds healthy and reasonable. And, you know, especially if you've tried all the other ways too, you know, yeah, and this, absolutely. this is where we're at, but man, it's I, scary. I, it is. It is. It's I've scary. never been cheated on. I've never, I mean, like when I was 16, my boyfriend cheated on me with my best friend, but, and that was traumatic. <laughs> it was like super traumatic, but like, still it was like high school, no jobs were involved, kids, you know, stuff like that. That's right. But it was still, you know, it, it still affected me. I still remember it, but I've never had like a partner cheat on me full on, like experience that and stuff, but I am the product of that environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know the effects and have feel, felt it and have had to do my own work in therapy through it of being a child in that environment and seeing it. And even when you said the truth is trickled out and down, that even happens to a child with this story in the journey because you learn more the older you get. So it's like that trauma sticks with you. Yes. Because you don't know what's going on when you're a kid. I mean, you do, but you don't. But then as you get older and you have your own children, you're in your own relationship, you're like, oh my God. And then you really start learning the truth and that affects you and your relationships, you know? So I, I just bring that up and I share and I'm open about it because I don't think people realize when they are betraying or have been betrayed, either one, either whatever role you're in, how much that affects your kids, no matter how much you think you're protecting them from it. That's right. Melissa, right. you hit the nail on the head. You hit the nail on the head. And there's a huge population of people that grew up exactly like you and I. I'm a product of the same story mm -hmm. as well. And we do, we carry that trauma with us. Most of the time it's unconscious. We don't know sure. it, but it, it creates our life patterns. You know, it creates part of our personality, right? We might be a little more emotionally disconnected. We might be more of a people pleaser because we don't want this to happen to us. There, there's lots of ways that this can, that this can affect us as adults. And, you know, one of the saddest things that there's some common denominators with both the unfaithful partner and the betrayed partner. Let me just focus on the betrayed partner. One of the okay. common denominators is previous betrayals. And it's really interesting because 90%, I polled my, my client and 90% of them said to their husbands when they were dating before marriage, they said to their husbands, look, if you ever fall out of love with me, leave me, please don't ever cheat on me. I grew up, my parents, my mom, my dad, my divorce, whatever it was, right? And that is very, very common because what we end up thinking we're doing is telling the person that we're going to marry, you know, hey, please don't ever hurt me like this. And then what happens? We end up in that same scenario. Mm -hmm. So there are common denominators. Betrayal follows us. Now, maybe it's not cheating, like sexual betrayal. It could be financial betrayal. It could be parental betrayal. It could be betrayal from a sibling about a family secret. I mean, there's so many, you know, betrayal is just, you know, a violation of trust. And yeah. there's so many ways that that can happen. But your story, my story, how we grew up, that affects us. 
It really does. If not consciously, certainly unconsciously. How can we not have it follow us? <laughs> we, <laughs> Beth, we how can we cut it? it? Yeah, that's right. And you know, that's that's a great word. I call it disconnect. We have to disconnect from those patterns that we grew up with that we're not even aware of. It's it's part of what I do with, with people, right? Is, is helping them really understand the links that they've had throughout their life and how they all play into this oh, that's why I did that, or that's why I do that, or that's why I have this part of my personality. We have to de-link, you know, from some of those childhood that we learned. We learned that. That's yeah. all. And we yeah. can unlearn. You're absolutely right. And I've I've had to do a lot of work in therapy, EMDR, a, a lot of Reiki, energy healing stuff. Like I've I've done a lot to become the person I am today. Because I've gone through that and I've lived through that. And I think that makes me the coach that I am today too. Like everything I've experienced, like you, as crappy as it's been, as, as it has been and it was, and then doing the work and learning and growing through it, that's what made us us. And I am, I am grateful for that. Now, okay, scenario. I'm thinking of a scenario, a situation in my head, because I'm trying to put myself as the listener going like, oh man, you know. We have, say we have a woman listening and her partner, she doesn't know if he's cheated. He probably has, doesn't probably want to admit it, caught him having inappropriate emails or text messages or something like that going on. Um, does she need to worry <laughs> that he probably is cheating? How does she find out? And again, like, I don't want to ask this question. I think it's kind of silly. But I'm trying to put myself in the spot of the listener. This is what she would probably be thinking and saying right now to you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, it's a hard question to answer. What do you do? The, I like to back things up a little bit, right? Okay. So if she has found inappropriate texts or emails that have been hidden from her, that's betrayal. It's betrayal. Right off the bat. It's a betrayal, right? There's no, you know, what is betrayal at its, at its most basic level? It's a violation of trust. I trusted you. I trust you to tell me things, right? The other thing really, Melissa, you probably know this better than most, right? Because it's part of your, your, your wonderful work that you're doing. We have a gut instinct and we need to listen to that gut instinct. There's a term that we use in the betrayal world called betrayal blindness, where we kind of squish down some red flags because we think, oh, that, that can't happen to me. Oh, my husband would never do that to me. Oh, you know, he's just friends with her, right? He, he would never do anything with her. But if we've got that little twinge in our belly, right? Gut instinct is emotions moving around in our body. That's what it is. It's not in the mind. Gut instincts are in our body. It's a felt sense in our nervous system. And that's a message that we need to listen to. So if there is somebody listening who's kind of wondering, like, maybe he is, maybe he isn't. I don't know if he is or isn't, but I do know your gut instinct is going off. You're having, and maybe it's not even a red flag. I actually talk with women about pink flags. If we can catch th something at a pink flag, that's much better than a red flag. But if your gut is going off, we need to listen to it. We don't want to go into betrayal blindness. And if a woman is afraid, well, I don't want to bring that up. I mean, my gosh, then he's going to think I'm accusing him and I'm not. That's a pink flag in myself to say, why am I afraid to confront him about an inappropriate text? So it goes back to me and my own fears. See, Melissa, so many times with the betrayed partners, we live through fear. We've got a fear of abandonment, being alone. We have this Hollywood vision that our husbands are going to go off with these young, beautiful bombshells and just live these great lives. And we're going to be the old maids alone with nobody and nothing. And we have this movie in our mind and it keeps us stuck in fear, fear of putting a boundary in place. What if he leaves me? What beautiful life. Do you have potential to live? If he does, if you choose to put a boundary in place, you've got a much better chance of living a beautiful, happy, content, peace-filled life on your own than you do staying with somebody who is lying, cheating, manipulating, and keeping secrets from you. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I mean. It's true. Yeah. I can kind of give women this scenario. However you woke up this morning, 
is how you're going to wake up every day for the rest of your life unless you make a change, unless you do something different. So Amen, if sister. I'm with somebody, yeah, right. And if I'm with somebody who who's who's you know texting inappropriately and I'm afraid to confront it, well, then I have to look at me. That's going to be my mind. Absolutely. Or I have to add this in because this is what you do. That could be their life and and like everything you described. Or you guys work together, especially with someone like you, and you can have a marriage that is more beautiful than the day you said your vows. Like, I love that there's that possibility too. Let me ask you really quick, like, you know, trusting and, and, and rebuilding that again, it's extremely difficult, right? How did you do that? Because I'm sure women are listening going like, how do you do that? How did she do that? Like, I, I freaking hate them right now. <laughs> I know. Now, you know, I use, when I'm working with people, I love stories and analogies. Okay. So I envision a bridge with this question because it is, it's, a, it's one of the most common questions that I get. You trust your husband after all of that? I'm like, mm-hmm. I trust him more today than I ever did before. I believe it. Why? Because I am much stronger than I've ever been in my whole life. My Mm. gut instinct is completely turned on. You know, trust is an interesting word. So people, first of all, people think in the betrayal world that it's the betrayed partner who needs to learn to trust her husband again. Okay. That's actually wrong and, and out of order. Okay. The first thing that has to happen is the unfaithful partner needs to learn how to trust his wife. That's number one. That's the ground floor because what has been happening? He has not trusted her. He has not trusted her with the truth, with the whole story, with what he was feeling before the affair even started. There was no trust. So healing after betrayal and learning how to trust again, it's not going to be me trusting my husband. It's going to be my husband learning how to trust me with the whole truth, number one. And then working through his why, W-H-Y is what I call it. You know, he's got to figure out his core why. Why did he do this? Because again, this had nothing to do with the marriage. Yeah, marriage had problems. What relationship doesn't? We're, we're human beings. We're not robots, right? But the anything within the marriage is not the core reason why somebody goes out and has an affair. It's much, much deeper than that. So my husband had to do that work. He had to go deep and figure out his why. As he's doing that, he's sharing things with me. He's being vulnerable with me. He's emotionally connecting with me because he is crossing the bridge. He's becoming a new version. And that's what I call the bridge. The the version of my husband that cheated on me for all those years, that's the old version of him. The new version of him would never, ever even imagine doing something like that again. Because he's got, he's got his own power within him. He's not weak. He's not looking for validation out in the world. He's filled with true confidence. He's, he, you know, he and I together, we meet each other's needs in healthy, positive ways, which we didn't always do before. So by him going through his journey and me watching it, that's how I learned to trust him. Sure. Because oh my God. Yeah. He had to learn to trust me. But out in the betrayal world, it's always the betrayed wife has to learn to trust her partner again. Uh-huh. And people miss this key point. When I'm working with the men, listen, most of these men, when I ask them this one question, who do you trust in your life? Most of them are like, nobody. Mm-hmm. Or they'll answer it, well, I trust my wife. And I'm like, you do? Okay, with what? Well, you know, I trust her with the kids and with the bills and she takes care of this and she does that and work and money and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, but do you trust her with your soul? Do you trust her with your core? Do you trust her with your fears, with your insecurities? Do you trust her with you, your essence? And then they're like, no. I'm like, so stop telling me that I have to help your wife learn how to trust you. You need to learn how to trust her first. That's the basis of trust. Wow. Wow. No wonder you can help couples work through all of this. Like, this is amazing, Beth. And and I think that we are shedding light on this whole topic, like in a whole different way. 
Like, I don't think people have looked at this. I hope everyone's eyes are wide open. One last question. And I, I know it's not a quick question, but you can give me a quick answer. <laughs> Again, as a listener, I'm sitting here going, how do I know? How do I know if I want to rebuild this and move forward or if I'm done and I want to leave this marriage? Absolutely. I'll give you, I'll give you the best answer for that. Stop pressuring yourself. Stop pressuring yourself. You know, I run a couple groups, right? And in one of the groups, all of my groups are eight weeks on purpose because I want everybody to take a pause. If a woman comes to me and says, Beth, you know, I'm not sure if I should stay or go. I'm like, good. That's awesome. Good for you. Now we're going to learn. You're going to heal. You're going to find that gut instinct. You're going to become a confident woman. And on the other side of that, with this new power that you have, then you're going to make that decision. I don't want any betrayed wife to feel any pressure from anybody, husband, family, friends, herself, to make a decision. The minute we make any decisions from a place of pain, we're shooting ourselves in the foot. We need to be making decisions from a place of power, healthy power. Now I can see my situation with healthy eyes and go, right, is he doing the work? Is he doing enough work? Yes or no? Yes, all right, maybe I'll give it another week. No? okay, that boundary is getting enforced. So if there is anybody listening who's struggling with that, I would say, start pressuring yourself. Let's get you healing. Let's get you the help that you need, some support that you need. Get some power. Get rid of the pain. The course is called pain to power for a reason. Get to the power point within you, that power place, and then make the decision, not from pain. Oh my God. What a perfect answer. I was not expecting that. <laughs> You're so amazing, Beth. This is awesome. Oh, thank you. Okay. How can people work with you? We'll put it all in the show notes too, but I know we're going to have listeners going, oh my God, I, I need to do her eight week course or my husband or, you know, like we need this work. Yeah. How can they work with you? Well, they can just go right to my website. It's coachbethfisher.com. Uh, the only thing I have to thank uh, thank us for is that I have a C in Fisher. <laughs> it's not just <laughs> F-I-S-H-E-R like it, you know, most people would have it. So uh -huh. it's Coach Beth Fisher. Fisher is spelled F-I-S-C-H-E-R. And they can go right there. My website is very simple. Start here, do this, do that. Because people are in a trauma state. They don't have time to read 97 blogs yeah. and listen to eight hours. I yeah. want people to get support. And I always say, start off with my free stuff. I've got a webinar in a couple of weeks. That's free. I've got free videos out there. I, my mission is to get this message to as many people as I can. And I'm grateful to you, Melissa, for allowing me to have this opportunity. Thank you oh. so much. Thank you for coming on and sharing this and being so brave and sharing your story and transforming lives. Like this was perfect and exactly what our needers, our listeners needed right now at this very moment. So thank you for being a part of that healing process and just helping everyone live their best life ever. Like you, you're amazing. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Well, you are too. Keep doing what you're doing. Yes. And I hope we get to work together again soon because this, I hope we great. just keep this conversation going. Thanks, Beth. I Thanks. would love it. Thank you. All right. And thank your listeners as well. Yes, everyone stay safe, stay healthy until next time. This podcast is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information in regards to the subject matter covered. This is given with the understanding that neither the host practice of the practice or the guests are providing legal, mental health, nutritional, or other professional information. If you need a professional, you should find one.